folks, and welcome or welcome back to NTI's Japan Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Ziv Nakajima again, and this podcast is brought to you, among others, by Native Shark, which is an online platform for learning Japanese. And what Native Shark do is they make learning Japanese really, really simple. You log in, you click a button that says study now, and the platform then shows you exactly what you need to learn next based on your previous progress. Now, again, this is simple, but the way it's designed means that students who use Native Shark once a day for four to five months can complete the equivalent of over two years of university study. And this is not just、um, them patting themselves on the back. Now that Native Shark's been in business for over a year, the results are in. So, this is exactly what people are saying.、Uh, just looking at a couple of posts in their community forums. And the student community, by the way, is one of the best things about the platform. So, one person's writing, most productive year I've had learning Japanese. And then another one says, I've started learning over a year ago with all of these other platforms, and what I learned there is only a fraction of what I've learned on Native Shark in just three months. And then yet another one goes, In my mind, my study timeline only started with Native Shark because that's when I really started learning consistently, and on and on. So, yet the proof's in the pudding. It's definitely the best online course out there. And since you've heard about it here on the podcast, you also get an extra little bonus. If you sign up for their free trial、uh, using the URL nativeshark.com forward slash NTI, and we'll link to it in this episode's show notes. So that's native without an E. So N A T I V shark, all one word, dot com forward slash NTI. You use that link to sign up and you'll get a double length free trial. So two weeks free instead of just the one. No need to put in your credit card or anything of that sort. You can just sign up, give it a shot. And chances are, at the end of these two weeks, you'll already be far ahead of wherever you are with your Japanese at the moment, whether you're just starting out or you're already in knee deep. Give it a shot. NativeShark.com forward slash NTI. All right, so special episode today. As you can probably guess, this one's all about our upcoming business networking and games event, which is happening next weekend, 10 to 12 December, at the gorgeous Montan Hakata Hotel here in fabulous Fukuoka City. As I've mentioned here on the podcast, one of our guest speakers at the event is Jason Ball, the king of English business networking here in Japan, owner and admin of the Business in Japan online community, which is now about 70,000 members strong. And he's hosted Mario Long, entrepreneur and game designer, and myself, the two other speakers scheduled to give a presentation or mini seminar at the event on the Business in Japan Clubhouse Room earlier this week. We had a nice long chat about the intersection between the worlds of business and games, a bit about our personal backgrounds, and of course about the event itself. But before we get right into it, something I'm even more excited about I've just received the menu for those three days from Monica, our Chilean private chef for the event. And boy, oh boy, just to give you a taste, here are some of the dishes on the menu. Grilled fish in seafood sauce and sauteed vegetables, parsley rice, green salad with avocado and pineapple, oven roasted pork with pineapple and vegetables, and some amazing traditional Chilean dishes like, a, I'm probably pronouncing this wrong, cauceo, which is a traditional Chilean tomato salad,、uh, carbonada, which is a minced meat, vegetables and rice、uh, dish, pebre. Kind of salsa with onion and coriander, Cuban salad, which is essentially pasta with、uh, pineapple again, ham and eggs, and so much more. So, just looking at the photos has got me salivating. Cannot wait. Okay, so without further ado, here's our recording of the Business in Japan Clubhouse Room with Jason Ball, Mario Long, and yours truly, talking all things related to business, games, entrepreneurship, and the wonderful ways in which these worlds intersect. Enjoy, and I'll see you again on the other side. It's、uh, a club that's been on,、uh, and myself have been on、um, Clubhouse since January this year, so coming up to a full year. And we do、uh, regular Monday Clubhouse events around the subjects of Japan and business. Lunchtime is general Japan and business and our professional lives here subjects. And 9 30 at night on Mondays is founded in Japan, uncommon knowledge about starting up. And that's、uh, co hosted with another Australian friend of mine who's CEO of Money Tree, Paul Chapman. And、um, yeah, we cover all the subjects of interest to founders,、uh, startups,、um, the startup industry,、uh, and investors. And、uh, we've been doing 
those events uh, and the lunchtime ones for about 40 something weeks now and this is an ad hoc or um, additional uh, event that I do from time to time around certain subjects related to Japan and business and uh, joined here today with uh, Ziv uh, Nakajima again and uh, Mario Long uh, who are both members of business in Japan and uh, Ziv at least has spoken on um, business in Japan clubhouses before and run his own clubhouses so without further ado I'll hand over to you Ziv to give us a, a little self-introduction um, and uh, a little bit about yourself what you do how you can help others how others can help you and then segue into the uh, the subject and then pass it on to Mario to do the do the same Yep, sounds good. Thanks for that. So my name is Ziv Nakajima again, as Jason mentioned. I've been living in Japan for nine years now, but coming and going for about 10 years prior to that. I'm born in Israel, migrated to Australia in my late 20s. And um, I've done a bunch of things. We, we might get into that a little bit later. But in my, um, in my current business, my wife and I have been running a real estate advisory company for about a decade now. And what we do essentially is help um, foreigners, whether they're residing in Japan or out of Japan, um, purchase and manage, and if and when they want to sell real estate property, um, whether it's investments or holiday homes, land for development, commercial properties, what have you. So we're basically um, real estate property um, proxy, representing people who might, for any reason, find it a little bit challenging to deal in Japan's real estate market um, without our assistance. And um, I mean, as for today's topic, I mean, the, the, there's a bunch that we could segue into, but basically I've been... Um, a gamer I, I want to say gamer but these days gamers sounds more like a video gamer so I've been um, I have been playing video games but I've been um, pretty heavily into um, games of um, old school types in my late teens early 20s maybe up to my mid 20s so board games card games role-playing games and um, I was telling Jason just before we started as sort of life took over that sort of took a back seat and you know other hobbies came about in business and life and family and that but um i think with covid with the pandemic and now that i have my own son who's just turning just turned 12 years old um we were stuck at home and we sort of got into board games again and um a lot of the stuff that we were doing playing these games when we were stuck at home sort of um hit a chord for me and not just rekindled my my early sort of years and teens um, passion for games but also I suddenly saw all kinds of connections into what I was doing um, in my adult life right in my in my non-game life so um, business and games there are a lot of things that I suddenly found that actually gelled together and um, that just kindled a whole in, uh, interest for me in how these two similarly separate uh, arenas or worlds kind of uh, combine but we'll, we'll get into all the details of that I'll, I'll let mario introduce himself first yeah sure uh Ziff, thank you uh first off um jason uh thanks thanks for again for inviting me um i've been a clubhouse member i think from the beta um times but i think this is the first actual uh clubhouse that i've participated in um as a as a panelist if that if that's a thing um so yeah i, I guess uh my introduction is a bit more uh maybe eclectic if i could say that um, i first came to japan in 2000 um on a study abroad program uh really enjoyed the time here uh finished that time uh went back to to uh michigan where i'm from originally just outside of Detroit and uh, finished up college. Came back here in 2006 um, as an English teacher, as many, many people um, probably listening and uh, maybe the rest of us as well have done. And then um, somehow graduated into um, or gravitated into uh, real estate actually. So I ended up um, managing a real estate and corporate relocation service company uh, for just over six, six and a half years. Uh, based in uh, Nagoya and uh, about two years ago um, maybe two and a half years ago I moved to Tokyo full-time 
uh, from Nagoya and um, changed careers to get into uh, kind of corporate B2B sales, business development. Um, and my situation is a bit different getting into games is um, I, I've, you know, I'm kind of an 80s baby. I grew up, uh, you know, playing everything from Atari 2600 to Nintendo 8-bit systems. And at the same time, I, I always loved a lot of the old school board games, uh, Monopoly. I, I love anything that's strategy based, even chess. Um, so I have two kids. Um, one of them is an elementary school aged uh, boy named Phoenix. And then one is uh, now she's a middle school student named Sakura. Um, and I and I tried to just spend a lot of the free time that we had uh, playing a lot of the the board games um, that I that I kind of brought over with me or, or ones that I bought while I was here. And um, I wanted to teach my kids how to teach or how to start their own business. That that was kind of how this all started. Was just wanting to to kind of inject a bit of um, like entrepreneurship in my kids and. And to show them that there is a way um, to to basically have a dream and to make it a reality. And my son, especially Phoenix, really caught on to that. Um, and and we'll talk about that a bit later. But but that's basically how I started um, this company was wanting to teach my kids how to start and grow a company. And it's it's kind of grown into something um, a little bit bigger than that by now. But um, Originally, it was just a project for my kids to, to, to kind of bond with them, spend time with them, and then to also uh, teach them a bit about business along the way. All right. So so that's why we're here, to talk about um, board games, games, uh, and business networking, and the relevance to um to being in business and to your professional life and what you can learn from games and why they are a match. And this is not just uh, for this evening where we'll talk about that, but we're also, uh, the three of us, speaking at a three-day weekend event in Fukuoka uh, on December, Friday, December the 10th, Saturday the 11th, Sunday the 12th. So a three-day weekend, um, staying in a, in a fantastic hotel with great food catered uh, independently from that. And... You're all welcome to that, and I'll I'll put the link. You're able to pin the link now, um, in Clubhouse. That's uh, new. Yeah, so I've just put the link to that event up there for anyone who's interested, and if you want to learn more, listen on. Um, but otherwise, uh, you can reach out to us. You can, there's a video in that link there, and uh, we're really looking forward to not only talking uh, at this event in a, in a seminar and and business relationships and networking sense, but but also getting down to just playing the games and, and sort of not putting the networking on hold, but uh, blending it in with with the gameplay and seeing where it goes because we think it matches. So I'm Jason. Um, I'm uh, Australian. I've been living in Japan 18 years. Uh, I work in IT-related project management and consulting. I'm deploying call centers for Uniqlo at the moment for the last years. <laughs> um, and... I also run Business in Japan, which is not just a club on Clubhouse, um, which you can follow by tapping the little uh, green house there, so you can see when we schedule events, start events, and find them in your hallway. But it's also a group on LinkedIn, one of the earliest groups on LinkedIn, and certainly the biggest uh, in Japan and related to Japan. We were founded uh, February 2008, and we're now just about to cross over 70,000 members. And at any one time, about a third of those are based in Japan. And so while LinkedIn isn't, isn't a great place uh, to build an online community, it's more like a Twitter feed, it is a place you can go to um, ask questions, to build some visibility, and to get information about doing business in, with, or related to Japan uh, and our professional lives here. So you're, you're welcome to head on over there and join if you're not already a member. And my um, interest in games, I certainly was interested in games as a, as a kid, particularly um, Monopoly and uh, things like that, but also card games. I remember at a very young age, my uncle got me into cribbage, which was fun. Um, I, I must say later, um, 
the board game which I, I found the most enjoyable and relevant to to the focus I had uh, in work and, and building a career was Robert Kiyosaki's uh, Cash Flow. That's a phenomenal which, uh, game. I thought was an amazing, uh, mm. amazing game that that taught stuff I wish I'd knew, um, you know, five to eight years earlier. So I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Ziv and Mario's thoughts because they both are in their own business. Where I have a, a side business, but I'm essentially an employee. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing their their story on um, on uh, how games and, and business networking. Uh, what it can teach us, how it works together. So go for it, guys. And for those that are listening into this uh, as a replay, uh, it's December 10th, 2021, uh, the event in Fukuoka. So if it's after that, sorry about that. But if it's not, uh, seriously, check it out. It, it's uh, it's not much to come. You really just got to get there and, and uh, pay for your uh, accommodation and food. And uh, it's really about meeting people and... Uh, you know, I think the, the cases are low in Japan. Um, we're, we're locked down again, so, so new, no new cases are coming in. Let's uh, take advantage of it, meet in person. I've, um, I'm not afraid to say I'm vaccinated, so uh, I'm looking forward to an in-person event uh, of this type in December. And thanks, Ziv, for, for setting it up, and Mario for agreeing to speak about your experience, uh, very relevant experience. It should be a lot of fun, I think. I was actually just the other day, I was looking at them um, because we, we don't actually, I haven't yet anyway, um, fixed any sort of itinerary. Like I know when the presentations that you guys are speaking at are going to be taking place. But otherwise, I haven't actually set up any um, activities or itineraries or so forth. And then just while I was thinking about that, you know, I was, you know, it, it's um, with business networking, it's usually an event that's scheduled for two or three or four hours. And people just know that they're going to be, you know, having a drink and chatting to whoever's standing or sitting next to them and just getting to know each other, exchanging business cards. But what do you do with a three-day, like a weekend event, right? I was trying to sort of think about activities that might be bringing people together. And then it just hit me that um, that's what games are all about, right? Like you, especially the lighter sort of icebreaker um, card games that are very easy to teach that you can just get, you know, get a bunch of people together over 15 or 20 or 30 minutes teach them the rules and just get them to go either together or at each other or whatever the game may be. And th there's so much um, socializing and mingling involved just by just in doing that, right? Like you, you meet a bunch of strangers and you, you suddenly have a goal, either, either a cooperative goal or something that you're doing against each other, but you're suddenly doing something that's already structured and already has you talking to each other and exchanging resources or whatever it is that you happen to be doing. It just sort of lends itself to that, doesn't it? No, I, I think you're spot on. I, I, I think, um, you know, especially like I, I have two kids. Um, my, my son is 10. My daughter is 13. And um, they they love video games. And, and so I think really these types of opportunities, these types of um, uh, events really are our are, are, are way of, of trying to preserving this culture. Because I think once once this is gone, we're going to lose something. Um you know, I know I know people that spend a lot of their time playing online games. There's no actual interaction um, with a person. You know, it's it's all people online. So I, I'm I'm just very happy that we have this opportunity to have an event to meet new people. And you're right. You know, I, I look forward to, to to meeting someone new face to face and 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 uh, and networking. And I think. With, with the common denominator of, of a game to, to kind of go off of. But I, I think there's something special about about meeting people and, and sitting across from a table and, and, and playing a game as opposed to just doing something online, um, which right now seems to be catching, uh, you know, most young people now. That's pretty much the main way that they, they interact with each other. Or worse, uh, mobile games, which, uh, <laughs> I mean, at least with the online games, you could sort of argue that there's some... There is some interaction, right? Yeah. ...stuff going on <laughs> and, and interaction between players, perhaps, in, in virtual sense, but most of the mobile games out there are just mindless, not much different from the early iPhone apps that were like uh, popping bubble, bubble wrap, 
on your iPhone. <laughs> They're, they're virtually not a lot different than that. I actually, to give to give video games their credit, especially in today's technology, um, which is a little bit more inclusive and social. Like my fr- my my son, for example, um, we just moved house just before Corona hit, so he entered a new school and straight away he just couldn't go to friends' houses. They couldn't come to our place. They could maybe meet in the park, but that was about it. And. Um, they actually, so they exchanged, um, you know, they exchanged um, usernames, <laughs> usernames in school before they went home. And then they they got together every day after school for a long, long time playing whatever online game they were into. I think his favorite was Fortnite at the moment. They get together and you see him like he puts on the headphones and the mic and, and then they start talking to each other, like as if they were just sitting at each other's house and having a chat, like... Um, calling each other nicknames and, you know, making fun of each other and, you know, doing missions together. So there is that. I mean, technology has advanced since we were in our teens or late 20s. And these days, um, even video games can be social. Well, I think we have to appreciate that we really are kind of in the beginning of a new generation where, you know, you have kids today where it's totally normal to have friends, you know, not, not just online avatars but actual friends that they never will meet in their lifetime um because they were born into an era of of online gaming um so you know in many ways we kind of are the last generation i think to to not grow up with that experience um of course any of us right now could log in and play call of duty or whatever you know Fortnite. um but it really is uh, you know for the younger generation something that they grew up in and it's normal um, to not physically see their friends ever, uh, which to me is a very alien concept. But, um, you know, I, I do realize that I'm kind of at the, the crossroads of two generations. Yeah. And uh, just for anyone who might want to come up and share their thoughts on um, board games, card games, gaming, and how the crossover with, with learning and with networking, with relationships, with rapport, that sort of thing. You can certainly um, uh, put your hand up soon, but we're just going to wait a little bit longer and get through the the process, and hopefully you've got a uh, a good profile and and not just a blank profile, which can be a problem. So, all right. So, again, we are going to be doing this in person uh, in uh, Fukuoka in December 10th. Um, what I like about that concept is um, is the fact that we will all be there around a common subject of, of interest. And um, the beginning of rapport is the things that you have in common. And so a lot of networking events become quite staid. Uh, people walk in, they don't necessarily want to go up to anyone new. They see a couple of people they already know and they gravitate towards them and spend 80% of their time with them. Um, I'm all for having immediate rapport and back in 2004 I started uh, what I called connecting good people which is where I, I brought people together who I thought had a uh, common interest uh, or would appreciate meeting each other or both doing the same job or uh, something like that and I was always introducing in person it was never by email and as that concept grew and uh, and I had more and more people to introduce I didn't want it to go too large so I sort of set a limit of about 10 or 12 people maximum and I called it micro networking and the concept there was meeting um, with people uh, who had already a common subject uh, of interest maybe they were all finance uh, software developers or maybe they were all running a hospitality business or maybe they were working in a a particular industry or something like that I would bring them all together I would ask um, um, a couple of people to say who do you know who you'd like to meet and I'd go and reach out to that person and it would be a way for me to expand my network as well um, but otherwise it would just meet on a Saturday at a coffee shop or an izakaya or on a weekday um, or some other some meeting room of somebody's um, business and this is a this is a uh, an on steroids version of that where people who are passionate about uh, board games and, and like me are looking forward to learning about the more modern ones that I sort of missed <laughs> um, 
we have that in common. We're, we're excited to be there for that. But we're also networking. So I, I, I love the idea. And, and business, right? I should say that um, I, I sort of hinted at that before, but um, you mentioned cash flow, Jason. And for me specifically, a lot of the uh, cash flow is definitely one of the big ones. But a, a lot of the games that I've been playing, and again, I've only gotten into them again these past couple of years. So it's same as you, I suppose. It's been a... 20 or 30 year uh, hiatus for me, you know, not, not actually knowing what's happening out there, but getting into them again now, there is so much that actually corresponds, you know, aside from the philosophical aspect of, you know, business is a game in a sense and how that's, you know, sort of scratches your itch of, of um, challenge and accomplishing goals. But the very practical skills that we, um, that we, learn or, or utilize or, or hone as we play a game whether it's a board game or, or a card game or any sort of um interactive game that, that's actually involving a few live people there is so much that we do that i suddenly see that i'm doing on a daily basis as i do business right and mario can probably delve in even deeper into that because he's actually um he's actually designed and, and marketed a game but stuff like resource management and and risk management and um you know, negotiation or, or um, you know, holding off with a strategy until it's the right time to pull it and, and uh, you know, pretending to be A while you're actually doing B. There is so much involved in games that we actually pull off on a daily basis when we're doing business or at least successful business, isn't there? Yeah, I think, I think you're spot on. I mean, I, when, I, when I think about business, um, it, it actually doesn't matter to me if you're selling uh you know crypto currency cryptocurrency consultation or if you're selling apples on the corner i think the fundamentals of business um are essentially the same you know it's it's the same sales flow to sell someone fruit you know on the corner as it is to sell um you know a fortune 100 company um some ai product or or, or software so you know the, the same thing goes for games um, it, it's a business, it's a product. You still have the same fundamentals of, of understanding who your audience is to uh, the same issues of, of production, marketing. Um, all of those things are the same. It doesn't matter if, if you're uh, manufacturing vehicles or if you're making uh, a board game. It's, 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 these are all universal concepts. Um, the only difference is I think it's a lot, it's a lot more fun, honestly, to, to design and, and test a game um, than if I was sitting in some cubicle somewhere uh, as a telemarketer. So I think if I have to do it, I'd rather do something like this that I enjoy and that it's, it's fun um, than, than something that probably uh, would not be as enjoyable in the long term. Now, on the three-day weekend, we, we're, we're each going to do a talk, um, a seminar perhaps. Um, but essentially, um, yeah, it's networking and gaming. But can you tell us, uh, we can't do the whole talk here, obviously, Mario, but do you want to give the people listening um, uh, an introduction to uh, the details of how you designed this game and how your son took part and what you were aiming for, what you came up with, you know, uh, the, the crowdfunding I know you did. How did, sure. how did it all come together? Yeah, thanks. Um, so this all started in 2019, um, and it was it was just coincidentally. I, I saw my, my son drawing a picture um, of of this this skull character. It was like a, a guy with like a, a huge kind of uh, like a chibi you know anime character uh, head that was a skull. And I and I just asked him. I go I go like, what is that? And he he goes, oh, that's the Skull King. As if I should know who that is, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, tell me about it. And so he starts to tell me this, this story about this character he made up. And I just thought, this is such a great opportunity to show him that you can take this idea and you can make it into something. And so I sat down with him, I grabbed some crayons and I go, well, all right, well, if he's a king, he's got some people that work under him, right? So let's, let's draw them too. All right. And if, and if he's a king, he has a kingdom. All right. So let's, let's draw a map. And so we sat down and we drew a map, starting with the, the Skull King's kingdom, and then we basically made a world. And um, and it was completely random. I mean, the, the map we drew, everything was random, and then we just started to kind of play around with, with feeling out um, 
different kingdoms and, and, and why this place is different from this place. And, and before we knew it, um, we, we had this map and then we had these, these, these kingdoms and then we had these characters inside the kingdoms that I thought um, all had really interesting stories. And, and I thought, all right, well, how can I take this a step further? And I said, why don't we make a game out of this? You know, why don't we, uh, one of the characters that he had um, came up with was a group of pirates. And, um, and they were from an island called Curry Island, right? And so we, we started to kind of talk about these pirates and why they were considered pirates and if they actually were bad guys or good guys. And so I thought, you know, why don't we make a strategy game where we have ships and, and on those ships, you basically control uh, the crew on those ships. And we didn't quite have the mechanics of the game down. Um, you know, we certainly didn't have a professional looking map because it was drawn on crayon. Um, but we just started to, to kind of play around with, with the concept of, of a game where you basically move ships around the board and then you navigate the crew on those ships. And I couldn't think of any examples of other games that sounded like this. Now, of course, I'm sure maybe some people that are listening to this um, might know of maybe a dozen games that are like this. But honestly, in my experience, I, I never knew of any games that were like this. And so I thought we had something that was original, um, that wasn't, you know, kind of a carbon copy of something else. And we just started to develop it. You know, we, we drew the map over and over again. Uh, we drew the, the, the game board. Um, we made characters that would be the captains of the ship. And then I, I tried to talk to him about how he wanted the game to play. You know, what are the types of things that you think you could do um, on a ship? You know, you sail a ship, you fire cannons, um, you repair damage. You know, we've seen movies where people board uh, ships to take over the ship or capture the ship. And so we just had to simplify um, what you could do, um, what you couldn't do, and then work on the balancing. So so basically, that was the beginning of how the game is called Golden Age of Pirates. And it's a, um, it's a naval strategy game uh, for two or more players. Um, and... It's very interesting because uh, there's additional add-on sets that we have coming out very soon that can be played independently, so you don't have to buy them. Um, and you don't have to buy them in any particular order either. So if you want to buy the second game and play that as a standalone, then you can. Um, if you want to buy the third game, which has different mechanics and different, different pieces, you can. But what's interesting is that you actually can combine these three different boards together you can combine and mix and match the pieces from those games to play a game um, that's much larger with more players. So we wanted something that um, was very easy to pick up, difficult to master, but something that was original. And, and I'm happy with how it turned out. And do you think it's teaching, uh, as you said, your, 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 your goal was teaching your son about business, creation, that sort of thing? Yes, yes. I mean, I think he has a very good understanding now of how to, to bring a concept um, to prototype stage, um, how to market a product, and, and how to sell it. And then the basic fundamentals of, you know, of, of cost and profit. I think he, he understands that. Um, and the phase we're in now is, is B2B business, so, so how to arrange uh, meetings with clients, how to pitch um, how to negotiate. So th that's the phase that we're in now. Um, and he's 10, so you know it's honestly it's a lot more heavy lifting on my side than his. Um, but I'm trying to include him in as many of these steps as possible so that he's an integral part to the development um, of this project. Fantastic. I think so talking been, uh... talking about heavy lifting, um, a lot of um, companies out there have, have started to do this job um, for you, haven't they, Mario? I mean, I see a lot of... Um, my friends who are, I haven't been in the corporate world for about, you know, a decade, decade and a half now, but I constantly see um, 
people that are working in large companies saying, oh, we're off to do paintballing or we're off to do, a, uh, we, we've got an escape room happening this weekend and everybody's getting together to do something. And um, back in Israel, when I was in the army, there was a lot of, um, they didn't call them games, but they sure felt like games of us getting together around a certain um, uh, structure or a kind of puzzly like um, bits and pieces on the ground that we had to put together to solve a puzzle to sort of advance to the next scenario. So there, there are a lot of um, corporate or company or business scenarios that are already implementing these kinds of things, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's a big um, kind of movement now to make work fun, which I think honestly, it, Japan probably will be maybe the one of the last uh, places to kind of catch yes. on to this this culture. <laughs> um, I, I've certainly tried when I you know I've I've uh, been the director of other companies that that had a majority um, Japanese national uh, workforce and and the feedback I got was you know you don't need to make work fun you know we we kind of <laughs> you know in our mind work is work and then we we finish work and then we we start our lives after that. Um, but I think a lot of Western companies are really trying to. Um, present themselves as, as a fun place to work. I think that's that's something that they want as an integral part of their culture. And, and there's a few companies in Japan, I think, that, that maybe have embraced that. But um, I, I've seen companies try to get their, their employees here to, to do things like that. Um, and I know that it's very difficult in the beginning to, to get your average employee to, to go to like a paintball event or something um, on a weekend with coworkers. Yeah, employee engagement. <laughs> it, it's got to be hard re remotely to do, um, uh, to make sure your employees are engaged and, and feeling part of the team, especially new employees that have joined during this period. So I wonder how applicable or um, how logistically possible it is to involve gaming virtually in the a business setting in, in, in that way. So just before um, we move on, just invite anyone who's got any comments or opinions on, on uh, the link between board games, card games, strategy games, even, even uh, video games and business uh, and the relevance to business. But of course, also the concept of uh, business networking during playing board games, if anyone's got any comments, uh, experiences, opinions, or questions, please join us on stage. Just put your hand up and we'll bring you up on stage. But Ziv, tell us more about um, the impetus for this, or the, the thing that uh, led you to propose this, because I know that, that you've been working on this type of event for some time before it came together. Tell us a little bit about the, the history and what made you think it might be a good idea. Sure. So th this actually was born out of a conversation that I had with uh, with a friend. Um, we haven't actually met each other in real life, but that, I mean, the age that we live in, especially since the pandemic, but a friend that I, um, you know, we sort of met each other. Um, I can't even remember if it was Facebook or Instagram, one of the social media channels. And he was also in real estate. He was also living in Japan and he was also um, enjoying board games since the pandemic hit. And um you know, we we're just chatting. Uh, he saw a few posts of mine where I posted some uh, pictures of a game that I was playing with my son. And he said, oh, you're in real estate and you play games. And, you know, he was actually, that, that idea actually came from him. He said, I wonder if there are other people out there who are, you know, into business and also into games. And as soon as he said that, I just had this vision of a weekend where people were getting together to talk business and marketing and brainstorming and startups and playing games all at the same time. And it just it just caught on me like a virus. So he's actually employed. He couldn't actually get into that himself. His boss, um, again, a Japanese company, not too thrilled about letting him have a side hustle <laughs> of any sort. Um, but I just took it and ran with it. And um, I think, again, you've mentioned the cash flow. We've mentioned Monopoly. Um, there are a lot of games out there, man. There's a game called Indonesia that I've only heard about about a year ago and I've purchased it. Um, fortunately, I was lucky enough to find a copy because it's out of print now. And that game is all about um, running shipping routes and setting up factories and selling produce and merging companies and hostile mergers of companies uh, versus other places. And man, there is so much in these games, These especially these days. They've definitely advanced since I was a teen. 
there is so much in them that is just stuff that we do on a regular basis, you know? And I, I just thought it would be kind of thrilling to get people together. Um, maybe if they only have an interest in business, but they sort of have an inner geek that they want to unleash or, they, you know, they've been into games as a child or they just want to have fun. And on the other hand, gamers, people who are into games or, or you know, literature surrounding games who also have some business ideas and might want to have a chat with somebody who's already done that and just to bring them all together. So we started this out. And again, you know, the, the, the game aspect of business, you start a new company, you don't know if it's going to work or not. You try a strategy, it doesn't work. You try a different strategy. All of this was the same for this event, right? Like we announced it, we put it out there, we tried some advertising, reaching out to people. Some of it worked, some of it didn't work. There was a month, you know, where things were very quiet and now towards the actual date, it's picking up and people are, you know, registering and, and, and actually signing up and going to show up at the event. And it's, it's just exciting stuff, which is, I mean, for me, businesses, I mean, obviously there's the financial aspect of it. If you're starting a business and you're not sure if it's going to work and your livelihood depends on it and you need money to eat, obviously, and to pay the bills and so forth. And then, you know, that's, that's not a game, but once things become a little bit smoother, or if you've already got a source of income and the rest of, you know, whatever business you're starting is sort of a, a side hustle or a hobby or an interest, it is kind of a game, isn't it? Like you, you try stuff, you talk to people, you see if it works, you try one strategy, another strategy, you fine tune it, you tweak it, and then you maybe win to some degree, or, you know, you, you sort, sort of get to the next level and it, it's just exciting stuff. And, and planning this event has honestly been exactly the same for me. Mm. Well, yeah, I guess the, the board games besides Monopoly that I played were things like Cluedo. I really enjoyed that. Of course, Battleship, um, the game of life I didn't really get into. Trivial Pursuit was huge when it came out and I, I did attend some fantastic social gathering home party type things playing trivial pursuit um risk is, is well known scrabble of course is an, is an absolute classic but tell tell, uh, tell people in the audience people listening the sorts of games that we're going to have available for people to play uh, in december okay so we're going to definitely have a lot of games that are um very accessible and very easy to learn for people who are not into games sort of thing so people who are just looking to socialize or mingle um have a drink and have a laugh and you know have a chat there are a lot of games that cater to that so those are usually um card games i guess everyone's familiar with um uno um, some people like to play uh, poker you mentioned cribbage a lot of normal card games or um custom card games that are you know not your typical 52 deck cards but cards that are actually um, tailored towards a certain game we're gonna have a lot of that we're gonna have a good game called um exploding kittens which is basically a really funny game um illustrated and uh, narrated not, not narrated well um captioned by the person uh, who runs the uh, oatmeal i forget his name at the moment but a really popular comic strip so really funny cards um with all sorts of um horrendous actions that you can pull on each other it's basically russian roulette so you keep pulling cards from the main deck and you hope that you don't explode and we're going to have slightly um uh, I don't want to say higher level, but slightly more complex games that are a bit more puzzly. So if you think about um, Tetris, for example, if, you know, we all used to play Tetris on our own if we were kids of the 80s or 90s. So there are a lot of board games these days. They're called um, Poly, Poly Domino or Domi Polo. I forgot the actual technical term, but games that actually have you placing tiles on the board, trying to um, sort of puzzle them together with each other to achieve some sort of goal. We're going to have quite a few of those. Um, and then we're going to have more thematic sort of immersive games with miniatures that you, you know, you run around and you uh, try to uh, fix a spaceship and get it to take off while fighting aliens or your wizards battling each other, hurling spells at each other. So we're going to have all sorts. We're going to have um, basic icebreaker party sort of um, social mingling games. We're going to have a little bit more advanced games and all the way up i mean i guess the people who stay up late at night and play the more immersive games um, might be people who are more familiar with it or people who want to have a go at it but we're definitely going to have um something to suit um, anyone at any any Can't level wait. of experience Can't wait. you know one game 
that I was really getting into, and I must I must have been I must have been in my thirties, early thirties. I came across some guys that were playing hero clicks, Marvel hero clicks. And they were so into it and had spent so much money on the various boards that you can create and the characters. Uh, and, uh, you know, they each had their own. And it, it's based on Marvel characters and, and it's, a, it's quite a, a strong strategy game of Marvel heroes and villains slogging it out on, on, a, on a board. I was just getting into it. And uh, it's, it's a link to Japan, actually, because the main guy running it and had most of the stuff moved back to Japan. And... Uh, it wasn't that much longer after that that I ended up in Japan myself. So Hero Clicks, I don't suppose you got that one. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I, I've yeah. seen some Marvel games out there, but I haven't actually. I don't actually own any of them, but they're definitely uh, there. Um, card games and miniature games, like you've mentioned. Um, but yeah, thematic is a very large part of it. So the more you, um, the more you get into it, the more you enjoy it, the more you want to be immersed. And there are zombie games alien games there's viticulture uh, which is a really famous game about um, running a vineyard you're actually growing wine and trying to sell it and dealing with local calamities of, of you know the Hello. sort of, yeah. wine. I'm yeah. wine right now. <laughs> <laughs> and there's these really silly silly very simple games like there's a game called dude which all it is is cards that bear the word dude with various trimmings on them so one of them might have might have a cowboy hat on, one of them might have a robot on them, might, one of them might have like a psychedelic sort of color scheme on it. And all you're supposed to do is just say the word dude to another person and he says the word dude back to you. And if you sort of think that you might have the same card based on the way you said the word, then you win kind of thing. I mean, it, it ranges from the hilariously silly to the really immersive thematic games. I'm looking forward to trying Mario's game, actually. Pirates are a big theme at our house. Excellent. No, I'm, I'm very happy to hear you say that. Um, and actually, today was very important because I just received an update um, that the newest version of the game um, is being shipped from the manufacturer today. Um, so I really hope that uh, by next week I'll have the new prototype to actually show and, uh, and actually demonstrate so we can, we can play it um, while we're in Fukuoka. I, I'd actually like to go back uh, for a second to the exploding kittens, um, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say in my life. <laughs> um, but, uh, Isn't there yeah, a band but... called that too? <laughs> and and uh, note, gentlemen, we have a lady on stage with us, so we'll give her a chance to talk. But what were you saying, Mark? Yeah, so if, if we have a chance, uh, maybe we'll talk about this in Fukuoka, but if, if we get into the crowdfunding aspect of anyone who's, who's a creator... Oh, yeah, Exploding um, Kittens, oh my God. And, yeah, Exploding Kittens, as, as far as 2015 is concerned, it was the highest grossing um, Kickstarter project of all time, the, the highest grossing Kickstarter uh, game, at least. I'm not sure if, if other projects would surpass that. Um but it it, grew, it 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 basically generated somewhere over eight million dollars U.S. Yeah, in uh, a heartbeat too. It didn't take them long. Right, and and so I actually I would actually love to share a bit of what my experience was um, to how you would generate that kind of revenue, um, and it's a bit of a longer conversation. So I'm sure we'll get into it at at, at our talk in uh, in Fukuoka, but um, it, it's it's inspiring. Because you can have someone that that uh, that isn't working for a large company like Hasbro or uh, you know Bandai Namco or something to, to have an idea um, and to basically bring that idea to market using modern technology, but that there's a bit more to it than that. You know, there there are some some organizations, there are some uh, some subcultures that are kind of driving that kind of success. Um, and I'll share a bit about it, a bit about my experience in Fukuoka. But um, that that exploding kittens was one story in particular that just caught my imagination. Um, and I've never played the game, so maybe. Uh, oh, you're in for a treat. Fukuoka. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to there. it. Fantastic. Let's uh, welcome Crystal. Welcome to the stage, Crystal. You got any uh, experience with games and, and networking, one or the other, or both, or any questions for the for us? Hey, everyone. Hi. Um, thank you for inviting me, Jason, up to the stage. Hi, Maria. Hi, Ziv. 
Um, well, I had experience of playing game board, uh, board games when I was a kid, like Monopoly. But when I grew up, no. But um, if possible, if I have get a chance to go to Fukuoka, it would be wonderful. But、um, the schedule is not fit, so I was wondering if you guys have any chance gonna have one of those kind of events where I live in Osaka, so like in Kansai, in the future. And well, to meet you guys. The, the next one is actually planned for Tokyo because a lot of people from Tokyo have reached out. They said and said that they would love to come, but sort of like you, it's just not the timing is not right for them to、um, to come to Fukuoka for the weekend.、Um, mm-hmm. But if look if it looks like there's a crowd for it in Osaka, I'm all for it. Just、um, the, the, don't be shy. Bring the people up, and we'll we'll hold it there. Oh, that will be wonderful.、Um, I've got a friend of mine, and she's a really young lady, and she wants to meet you guys, but she's not in LinkedIn or ch-、um, Clubhouse. So I'll bring her and meet you and play those games. That、Thank、sounds、you. great. Fantastic.、Uh, and well, I have. Does anyone else? Ah, sorry. I'm sorry. I I have a question with Mario. I'm sorry. I just joined in the middle of it while you were speaking. You said you your son was drawing a skull king, and you made a story and a game out of it. Um, is that game really like um exists so I could play with my kids? Yes. So the game um is called Golden Age of Pirates, and we're currently in the process now of of、uh, negotiating with a publisher. To have it、um, released retail,、um, I I did crowdfunding at the end of last year as a test. So I、mm-hmm. I, I I'm trying not to sell the game、uh, B to C, and、mm-hmm. and trying to to go directly to companies to sell in bulk.、Uh, oh. But I I really hope that that you find the game on a shelf at the end of next year.、Um, what I may do. I'll talk to Ziv about this, but I may、um, take orders at the Fukuoka event. Um, mm-hmm. To do a limited production run,、oh. um, just just FYI to explain to anybody, if you do a limited production run of a board game,、um, you're almost operating at cost、um, because to actually make a profit on a board game, you really have to manufacture something upwards of of a thousand units or more.、Um, oh. So so if I if I open up ordering to a group of maybe a hundred people or or something, it's more of just To let them try the game, it's not something that that's sustainable as a business. So,、um, I haven't decided yet if I'll do that.、Uh, but if I do,、uh, I think if if Jason、um, has your contact information,、um, maybe we could send you a link to how you could you could purchase it directly before it's available for retail. That will be wonderful. Thank you. And then also,、um, we've we've worked on a a screenplay、um, that we're currently planning to pitch. Um, to different streaming providers, so hopefully、mm-hmm. you see this as an animated series、uh, at some point in the near future.、Uh, it's called the、great. Golden Age Saga.、Uh, <laughs> but, but Crystal, I just want to say、um, to you and to everybody else in the audience:、um, flights to Fukuoka from Tokyo are just like、uh, Ichiman Gosen, like fifteen thousand yen, <laughs> <laughs> pretty cheap. Yep, it's cheap. Yep, it's cheap. Just that、um, I wonder if my husband's going to say yes. He's laying there right next to me. <laughs> Osaka Shinkansen is much cheaper. Yeah, yeah. I probably need to drive by. Yeah, I need to go by Shinkansen. <laughs> I love to meet you guys. And, and, and j- just by the way, it is a it's, it's a three day weekend event. But there's you, there's a daily pass. You can just come in. You don't have to stay. Just just come、mm-hmm. for the day and only one day and go. Saturday would be the best day if you want to hear the the, the talks that we're giving.、Mm. Yeah, I'll check with my husband. But if I can, maybe next time when you guys do in Tokyo. And please、um, schedule one here in Kansai as well. All right.、Thank、after、you. Tokyo, we'll look at Kansai. I promise. Thank you. Okay. And、um, um, that's all from me. Thanks. Thanks for coming up, Crystal. Anyone else、Thanks. has any questions? Thanks, Crystal. Or any thoughts on、uh, board games and business networking? Come on up,、um, Mario. I shared a link.、Uh, it's the Kickstarter link um, uh, to um, Sakura Phoenix and.、Uh, Golden Age of Pirates. If there's a better one, I can share that link. But for anyone who wants to read about the game, they can read about the at least the first iteration. I haven't got、yeah. another iteration. 
And I should say that we're going to have uh, my friend Mitch, uh, Mitch Mead, also an Aussie, is going to be a really talented um, videographer and photographer. So everything that we do on the weekend will be available offline after the weekend as well. Great. All right. So what are you, what are you going to talk about, uh, your, your talk? I, I, I guess I should introduce what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about... Um, business networking in Japan specifically, uh, perhaps the differences between uh, networking outside of Japan and networking inside of Japan, and having a, a solid strategy and um, ongoing effort uh, of uh, systematically going out there and building your network in exactly the, the direction that you want. That's kind of what I'm going to talk about and, and weave in um, the the link between games and uh, rapport and uh, and all the things that um, uh, that uh, networking that I've learned from networking in Japan and um, how it fits into what we we're, we're doing there in Fukuoka together. So I'm looking forward to it. But Ziv, what are you going to speak about? Um, I'm going to speak about my favorite game of all, real estate investment. So this is what I do, what I've been doing for a, a good long while now. And um, Japan's a little bit different to other countries around the world as far as um, real estate, uh, both market fundamentals um, and the relationships involved in doing deals here. So I'm just going to um, talk about that and just really basic stuff like uh, how to understand the market, how to get into it cheaply and uh, what you can achieve by doing that. And of course, uh, Monopoly is, is probably the most well-known one that involves uh, real estate investment, but there's others, right? Uh, do you know? I mean, cash flow 101 was, was, um, was about investment, uh, including real estate. Uh, I'm not too familiar with real estate um, asset or investment games. Are you, Mario? Um, actually, there's a, a friend of mine uh, based out of Nagoya who also de uh, developed his own game. And um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's New York 19... I want to say 1905, but it's a, it's a property building game. Um, and, and maybe I'll talk about that a bit as well because I learned a bit from him. But this is a game you actually can buy, uh, I think, on Amazon um, if you can find it. Um, but I believe it's called New York 1905. I'll look it up, and if I'm wrong, um, I'll, I'll, I'll correct myself. Yeah, well, what are you going to be talking about, Mario? Obviously what you've just mentioned here, but otherwise... Yeah, well, I think I think as much as I'd love to, to plug uh, the game, I mean, I, I think um, really for the audience, I'd like to actually connect on a more of a personal level to share um, the experience of of making this game and honestly, uh, what it what it's cost me, and I don't mean in a financial sense. I mean it's 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 been a very long road uh, to get to a point where I have a finished product. So I'd like to, to maybe share some of the, the experience that I went to through, um, you know, because maybe there's someone else that's in the same predicament that I was in two years ago. Maybe they're, they're, they're between careers or they've had to change um, how they how they interact with other people or work because of COVID. Um, so I, I'd like to just share on a personal level um, some of the honest truth that the kind of the ugly side behind um, what it takes the sacrifices that you have to be prepared to make um, to go into business for yourself in something like um, making games, because it's not something, especially in Japan, um, that most people will will respect. Um, especially if you know if you're a husband or a father, um, like like I am, you know, uh, it, it's very difficult to explain to a spouse um, that this is the career path that you'd like to go after, especially if you're in something stable. Um, like manufacturing or, or real estate. Um, so I'd, I'd like to share a bit of that experience and, and, and in many ways how this project um, has, has helped me develop um, and improve as a, as a person and as, as a professional as well. I think that's going to be very much a recurring theme, um, which you can speak to and I can speak to, and Jason as well. I mean, Jason, as he said, he doesn't actually run his own business business, but um, A, his side hustle is very much uh, an enterprise. 
And B, um, you, Jason, you've also been involved with the uh, uh, startup in Japan movement. So you know a lot about starting up a business in Japan, don't you? Oh, oh yes. And I, I, it's not like I don't do any business on the side. I just ha haven't done it as a full-time uh, full gig. So, yeah, looking forward to sharing. And I'm sure there will be people there. And, and that's uh, that works in Clubhouse too. There will be people there who have their experience to share. And that's that's what networking is all about. And I'm, I'm really looking forward. This will be the first uh, sort of serious networking event that I've been to since the COVID started, so two years. Um, and within that is a year of uh, using Clubhouse and network, literally networking and proactively and on purpose developing uh, a network and, and engaging with that network on Clubhouse where uh, it's not about the platform Clubhouse, it's about the relationships with the people. So I'm looking forward to walking into a room and spending more than just a, an hour in a networking event, but a, but a whole weekend uh, networking with what I've learned about um, people, relationships uh, in Clubhouse. And it's in Clubhouse, it's also, um, at least for my Clubhouse, has been about uh, a common subject of interest. Uh, a passion, a reason to be there, and, and uh, this is this is going to be that sort of event as well. So, looking forward to it. We're coming to the top of the hour, so if there's anyone who wants to quickly jump up and ask any questions about the event on December 10th, uh, 11th, and 12th, uh, please do so. In the meantime, um, paint us a picture, uh, Ziv. Let's let's go. Um, uh, for, for anyone listening to this before December 10th in, on a replay, or anyone in the audience still. Um, what can they expect and what are the details of the event and how can they find out more and to, for them to decide whether they want to come on? Yep, so the uh, the link that we've got at the top there um, on our website, nippontradings.com, uh, there's one of the pages is the Business Networking and Gaming Weekend event. If you're not seeing the link, just go to nippontradings.com and just scroll towards the middle of the page. Uh, you'll find the link that goes to the uh, uh, event description registration page as well. But basically what it's going to be is... Um, We've got the hotel. The hotel is absolutely fabulous, by the way. If you've never been to Fukuoka City, that's an excellent city to visit. And the hotel is right at the heart of it. So right next to uh, Hakata Station, which is where the uh, Shinkansen drops you off. And it's only two stations from the uh, airport if you're coming in by flight. So we're going to have the hotel's um, lounge area, which is really the reason that we chose this place. Phenomenal lounge area. Um, one big central large table and a bunch of little and medium sized tables with cushions and chairs and so forth all around it. So plenty of room for people to either um, mingle or talk or play games or um, also for us to have the presentations. But we also have access to the uh, hotel's uh, two function rooms. So they've got a kind of home theater room and also a, um, a room that they currently use for uh, ping pong, for table tennis, but they're gonna clear out the table and put the projector in there for us to have the presentations in. So all of these public areas are us for the weekend, starting from um, Friday at 7 a.m. Check-in for people who are actually staying at the hotel, check-in is 3 p.m., but we're welcome to use the spaces from all the way from Friday, 7 a.m., and all the way to Sunday at 6 p.m. Um, the curfew is uh, midnight on Friday, midnight on Saturday. So we can pretty much do whatever we want. We have a catering chef, Monica, um, who's a very um, well-known around Fukuoka, at least well-known uh, private event chef. Uh, she's from Chile originally, and she does some phenomenal food, which is going to be catering to us or to people who actually go for the meal-inclusive tickets. That's going to be served at the hotel, but even somebody who's not going for the meal-inclusive tickets, um, the hotel allows us to bring food in. So you can just uh, pop out, grab whatever you want, uh, either eat outside or bring it back in with you, drinks, whatever you want. Don't get stupid drunk, but you're very welcome to drink at the event itself. Um, and then we're going to have the presentations on Saturday. So Friday is going to be basically people um, coming in, uh, some of them coming in on the Saturday, some of them coming in on the Friday checking in, getting to know each other, uh, having a chat, obviously playing some games. Saturday, um, we're going to have the presentations, uh, probably one before lunch and then two after lunch. And then again, same sort of thing. So mingling, chatting, playing games, same goes for Sunday. But I think one of the large um, aspects of the event, for me at least, is that 
Um, for one, us, the speakers, so Jason, myself, and Mario are all going to be there constantly. So if any of you have questions about starting a business or about game design or about investment, uh, we're there for the weekend. So feel free to pick our brain, uh, grab us for a private se session, uh, have a brainstorming session with your business idea, whatever you want to run by us. But also some of the people um, here in the clubhouse room, we've, we're, I think all of us, just looking at the audience, all of us are expats. But at the event, we're actually going to have some uh, Japanese people as well. And at least from my side, I know that we're going to have a real estate agent, an accountant, uh, an immigration lawyer, um, and the expat relocation specialist that are all going to be there with us on the Japanese side. And they're very, very happy to share their expertise and make some connections. So, I mean... The main point for us is just to meet each other, make some connections, uh, talk some business and play games. Uh, whether it's going to be more structured than that, aside from the presentations, I'm not sure yet, but I think that's already going to give us a lot to go with. Well, I, I think it sounds like it's going to be a great, uh, a great time. And I, I'm not just saying that because I'm on the panel, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to meeting you guys again, uh, Jason, to seeing you again. Um, and, and honestly to meeting, uh, the group of people that, that are there and, uh, like you said, Jason, this will be the first event as well for me um, since since COVID uh, to, to actually be in a room of people playing games and, and networking. So I'm looking forward to this a lot. Me too. And and sorry for the delay there, Ziv. I was sharing 30 second uh, snapshot of the event. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, onto uh, the Facebook. But um, yeah, really looking forward to it. Anyone in the audience, if you want to come. Um, There'll actually be um, um, a, a chance. We could we could open up a, a clubhouse for a period of time within the weekend. I'm not sure when or how, or maybe it should be a Zoom so people can see what's going on. But uh, if anyone's got an interest, they want to come, but they can't. But they can't make it. Um, but they they'd love to join for a short time at, at certain periods. Then let me know, and maybe I can set up a, a tripod or or a, an iPhone and and show you what it's like there. I've actually had but some questions you... about that. There were some people who were wondering if there's going to be a virtual aspect to the event. Um, I said that I'm not sure, probably not, but that does sound like a good idea, yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, uh, Ziv and Mario, for joining the Business in Japan Club uh, event tonight. And uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, December 10th. My, my wife and daughter were thinking to come with me uh and then and and and, ha and do sightseeing around for cork or whatever but apparently they've found something else they're going to do that they're excited about <laughs> but uh it, it is adults only right i mean it's not not bringing children or are children coming as well it's not geared towards children i mean they're definitely welcome but i think um, because of the extended time aspect of it they might get a bit bored after a couple of hours with just you know adults drinking and talking i mean the games would be great but there's not going to be a lot of children for them to mingle with but um i think for guest appearances they're definitely more than welcome so anyone coming for a, for a day on, on, on one of the days, maybe it, maybe it works. Mm. All right. Thank you very much, Mario. Appreciate it. And really looking forward to going to meeting you and uh, meeting you again. And uh, Ziv, thanks for organizing. Look forward to it. We'll see you all in December. Hey, thanks, everyone. And, uh, and see, you, uh, see you next week in uh, Fukuoka. Thank you. Thank and you. And Crystal, thanks for joining the, the stage and, and asking those questions. I, I really... Hope you could come, but uh, we'll see if we can do one in uh, Osaka at some point. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, I'll try. But if I can't, I'll look forward to the one in Osaka. Maybe one. I'll probably visit one in Tokyo. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. And anyone listening to this uh, recorded, and it's not December tenth, two thousand twenty-one yet, and you want to come, you can find me on LinkedIn pretty easily. I can help you out there, Ziv as well, Mario as well. Uh, if it is after. And you still want to talk about this concept of board games and business networking um, the next one in Tokyo um, future one somewhere where you are perhaps we'd be happy to uh, you know connect and, and chat about that real ones or uh, real ones planned or any that you'd like to to set up maybe there's something we can we can do together around gaming uh, business networking uh, and connecting with each other so thanks everyone have a great night um, Things are looking good. The weather's cold, but, but fine. Enjoy the rest of your week. 
All right, nice long chat and hopefully gives you a taste of what you can expect next weekend as well. Uh, bookings from meal inclusive event tickets are officially closed, but if you'd still like to try and squeeze your way into Monica's culinary world, let us know and we'll see what we can do. Uh, bookings for all other tickets are still open until two days before the event. So that's until Wednesday, December 8th. If you haven't gotten your ticket by now, this really is the final stretch. The hotel's already out of twin rooms, but they've graciously agreed to allocate some of their suites, which are originally meant for guests, uh, for four guests or more, to anyone who's still interested in a twin or double room at the same price. So hop over to the event page. If you haven't booked your ticket yet, we'll link to it below in this episode show notes or in the comments section if you're tuning in via YouTube. So yeah, shaping out to be quite the event. Can't wait to see you all with us next weekend, 10 to 12 December at the Montan Hakata Hotel in Fukuoka for Japan's first business networking and gaming event. Now, before we go, we're also, as always, going to tell you and also link to our other sponsor's website. That's Hiroshi Shimizu, immigration lawyer and administrative scrivener. If you're thinking about moving here on a more permanent basis, or you're already in Japan on some sort of a temporary visa, and you want to switch to a longer term or permanent one, or if you're considering setting up a local company or a branch office of a foreign company, and you've got any sort of business or visa related inquiries, or even if you just want to find out what your options are on any of these topics, feel free to contact Hiroshi Shimizu. You can find him at japanimmigrationexperts.com and he can help you set up a company, apply for any kind of visa, or just provide you with the best advice and extremely affordable consultation related to these topics. And he's already done that for many of our listeners. So feel free to reach out to him. Again, that's japanimmigrationexperts.com and you'll be well on your way. And that's it from us for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Japan Real Estate Podcast. Do share it with your networks and please let us know what you think. So leave us a short rating or review on the iTunes store, on Spotify, or just drop us a line in the comment section of wherever you might have found this episode. We love hearing from you. Hope to have you with us again next time. And until then, have a great day or night ahead. Yoroshiku! Yoroshiku!